What's up everyone, before I get started, I wanna let you know that I just posted a transformation picture on my Instagram, at Untamed Strength. Go check it out. It's my bulking transformation from 165 pounds body weight to 255 pounds body weight. And then in the description, I list my diet, what I was eating on a typical day-to-day -day basis. So if you want a good chuckle, a little bit of entertainment, go check it out. So back again with another whiteboard tutorial. I've done a few of these in the past. It's been a while since I've done one. That's it folks, just three days and you can get stronger. When setting up for the deadlift. Intense. This is God! If you guys like this style, if you like me talking on a whiteboard and showing you the diagrams, let me know in the comment section. I'll start making more of these. All right, let's get to it. Today, I want to talk about why your bench press sucks and how to fix it. So there are three reasons why your bench press might suck. Reason number one, you're weak. I know it sounds pretty harsh, but it's the truth. You just haven't put in the reps, the training sessions, the months, the years that it takes to get stronger. You have not put in the time. So keep your head down, keep training, and you will get stronger. If you're currently stuck in your program and you're not making progress, make sure you're eating enough food outside of the gym, you're getting enough sleep, you're managing stress, you're allowing adequate time for recovery, and if that's still not doing the job, you probably need to switch programs. There are tons of programs out there. Find one that works. I offer two on my website. You can check those out. There is a reason that I made them. It's because they work. A lot of people come to me and say, Alan, I'm stuck at 135 for five. I can't seem to get past that. Could you check my technique and see what the problem is? After watching their technique, I'm thinking, your technique looks pretty good. You're just weak. In order to get past 135 for five or whatever plateau you're stuck at, you just need to get stronger. Reason number two why your bench press sucks is you are skinny. To quote Dave Tate from Elite FTS, you can't flex bone. You gotta work on building some muscle, man. You need to work to increase the size of your pressing muscles. Muscles contract, they move bone, bone moves weight. A lot of you are interested in staying at the same body weight, but increasing your strength from there. And that is possible. You guys tend to quote uh, smaller guys like maybe Johnny Candido or Richard Hawthorne and say, well, they're not very big, but they're extremely strong. But they have maximized the amount of muscle that they can put on their frame. Don't just look at the body weight and say, he's 165, I'm 165, why is he so much stronger than me? Because he has a lot more muscle at that body weight. So in short, you need to work on building your pressing muscles. And reason number three why your bench press sucks, your technique. That's where I come into play. The great thing about these videos is that you can watch them and implement them immediately because you can change your technique tonight. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about bench press bar path and more specifically where the bar should be touching on your chest. I have made a video in the past that goes a lot more in depth about bench press bar path. You can check it out right here. Go watch that video. I'm gonna to touch a little bit on that in this video, but I'm gonna more specifically cover where the bar should be touching on your chest. When we look at the bench press, it's a very basic movement. We lay on the bench, hold the weight at lockout, lower the weight under control, touch our chest, and then press the weight back out to lockout. If we go on YouTube and we search bench press, there are thousands of videos that come up. I have tons and tons of books in my office that explain how to bench press. So what this tells me is there is more than one way to do it. There are multiple cues and techniques for the bench press. Some techniques or cues might work for him, some might work for her, some might not work for him, some might not work for her. There are multiple ways to skin a cat. What's great about this is that you can watch all these YouTube videos and you can try out multiple different techniques, think about multiple different cues, and see what works for you. These videos are techniques that I use, cues that I think about that hopefully help you guys. Okay, enough talking, shut up Alan, what's behind you? So today we're going to talk about Le Bench Press. I've upgraded from my sharp metal file to a laser pen. Okay, so we're gonna very briefly talk about Bench Press Bar Path, again, I did make a video about this. Go check it out, it's a little bit more in depth than I'm about to go right now. So when benching, there are two key points that we need to remember. Point A, the weight at lockout, and point B, the spot that we touch on our chest. No matter who you are, man, woman, short, tall, skinny, fat, long arms, short arms, point A is going to be the same spot for everyone. It is directly over your shoulder joint. You want that weight resting perpendicular to the bench. You don't wanna hold the weight out here and you don't wanna hold the weight back here. Point A, where you start the weight is directly over your shoulder joint at a 90 degree angle. That is also the point that you're going to finish each rep. Point A must remain consistent. Now, point B, where we touch on our body is going to vary from person to person. Arm length, hand width, 
the amount that you tuck your elbows or flare your elbows is going to determine where you're going to touch on your chest. And in this video, I'm gonna help you figure out where exactly that spot is. Okay, so let's back to camera up here for a minute. When bench pressing, imagine that I was laying on a bench. If you were to look from the top down or from the bottom up of my bench press, I wanna see my forearms perpendicular with the barbell, okay? I understand that there's some power lifters who have a very wide grip like this and their arms, their form is not perpendicular to the bar, but they're doing that to shorten the range of motion. I'm not worried about that. I'm talking about general strength training purposes. I want you to have your forearms perpendicular with the bar. If you find that when you touch your chest, your forearms are not perpendicular, they are wider, you need to either bring in your grip so that they are perpendicular, or you need to flare out your elbows a bit more. What I'm assuming is you need to do both. Bring your hands in slightly, flare your elbows out a little bit so that you are perpendicular with the bar when you touch your chest. On the other side of that, if you are bench pressing like this with your elbows outside of your hands, you either need to widen your grip or you need to tuck your elbows more. I'm assuming you need to do a little bit of both. Widen your grip, tuck your elbows so that your forearms are perpendicular to the bar when you touch your chest. So again, the more narrow you are and the more tucked your elbows are, the lower on your body the bar is going to touch. As you notice, close grip, elbows tucked, touches way down here, I'm getting my arms perpendicular to the bar. As I widen my grip and as I flare my elbows, the bar touches much higher on my body. So again, the width of your hands and how much you flare your elbows are going to determine where the bar is gonna to touch on your body. Wherever you prefer to grab, whether it's narrow, wide, or neutral, make sure that your elbows match. So if I grab the bar here, I want my elbow here so that I'm perpendicular. I don't wanna have my elbows way out here because I'm not gonna be perpendicular. I don't wanna tuck them too much because I'm gonna be out here. Now, unlike the squat, the deadlift, and the overhead press, the barbell for the bench press does not move vertically straight up and down. If that were the case, and we were starting with the weight directly over our shoulder joint, that would mean that we would have to lower with our elbows at complete, our, our humerus at a complete 90 degree angle. That would cause us to touch right around the neckline. And flaring the elbows out this far would cause shoulder impingement and shoulder problems. So if we were to lower in a straight line, again, the elbows would have to go straight out like that. And as you guys know, that is not the correct bench press. Instead, we're gonna start at this point, tuck our elbows in slightly, and that's gonna cause the bar path to go down towards our body. Start here, as we tuck our elbows, the bar comes down. So, we are pulling the weight down the ramp and back up the ramp. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, starts here, down the ramp, back up the ramp. So, let's establish the fact that the bar path is not completely vertical in the bench press. We're gonna go down the ramp and back up the ramp. With that said, the bench press bar path should be in a straight line because that is the quickest and most efficient way to get from point A to point B. So what I wanna see you do when you bench press is get from point A to point B, back to point A, to point B, back to point A, over and over, clean, consistent reps. Oftentimes what happens is, when I see guys repping out weight, six, seven, ugh, and then they just die on that eighth rep or whatever rep it is, it's usually not completely their strength's fault for failing them, it's they've drifted off the bar path. So what happens is, they'll start at A, they'll go down to B, and then they'll press up here to C. So now they're exerting unnecessary energy to pull the bar back to this bar path and get it up to A. So they're not pressing the bar in a straight consistent line, they're pressing out. So we've established a couple key points. The bar is going to start directly over the shoulder joint at a 90 degree angle from the bench. The bar path is not vertical. We're gonna lower it down, down the ramp to point B and then press it back up the ramp. And we wanna do this in a straight line. Just like I talked about earlier, when you touch on your chest, I want you to get your radius and ulna, your forearms, perpendicular with the bar. Now that's gonna change as we widen our grip or as we tuck or flare our elbows, but I want you to record yourself or have your buddy check from the, your head down or from your crotch up to make sure your forearms are perpendicular with the bar. Now let's talk about where your elbows should be when you look at the bench press from the side. Now when you lower the bar and you touch the barbell to your chest, 
I want you to have your elbows slightly in front of the bar. In front meaning on this side. This side would be behind the barbell. So I want you to have your elbows slightly in front of the plane of the barbell. The reason I want you to have your elbows slightly in front of the bar is so that you put your forearms, your radius and ulna in a position that allows you to press back to point A. We're going to B, we're pressing back to point A. So I want your elbows to be in a position that allows you to apply force directly into that bar path. If your elbows end up being directly under the bar, you're gonna press straight up and then pull back. So we're gonna go off that bar path. We're gonna go straight up and then back. I want you to put your elbows in a position that allows you to press right back to point A as quickly and as effectively as possible. A common mistake that I see a lot of people do is touch too low on their body and have their elbows behind the barbell. If we touch too low on our body and our elbows are behind the barbell in this position, now we are pressing out this way. Again, I wanna be pressing back to point A. So elbows behind the bar is not gonna put me in the correct position to effectively execute a straight bar path back up the ramp. I want you to make sure that you're not exaggerating what I'm trying to tell you by keeping your elbows way too far in front of the barbell because now you're doing pretty much a bench press skull crusher or a tricep extension. This would be extremely tricep dominant. I want you to have your elbows just behind the barbell so that you're effectively able to engage your triceps, shoulders, as well as pecs to press. So if we look at this incorrect bench press technique that I see a lot of people do with their elbows behind the barbell, you are now not putting yourself in a position to press, you're front raising the weight. So if you're trying to bench press 200 pounds, you're putting your shoulder in a position that you're trying to front raise 200 pounds. Now, when we talk about the moment arm, I've got to credit Mark Ripito for teaching me about moment arms in his book, Starting Strength. We look at this guy here who has a correct bench press path, bar path. He starts at point A, lowers it to B, presses back to point A. Now we look at this guy with a sad face. He's starting A, he's lowering it way too far down to point B. Now, if we look at the distance between A and B, we notice that this guy has a much greater distance. So his moment arm is much greater, making himself less efficient and putting more strain on his shoulders and making the movement more difficult. By touching too low on his body, he is making the movement longer than it needs to be. They are both pressing vertically the same distance from their chest up to this lockout position, the same distance. But going, I guess, lateral plane, this guy is bench pressing way more. So one guy is benching here and here. One, the other guy who's doing it incorrect is lowering it way down here and way up here, which means he is making the movement much longer than it needs to be. Now, some of you could make the argument that more range of motion is optimal for increasing the size of your muscles. More range of motion, you're working the muscle more, but not at the expense of your health because this is not ideal for shoulder health, having the bar touch extremely low on your body. So as a quick recap, we wanna start with the barbell at point A directly over the shoulder joint, 90 degrees from the bench. We want to lower in a straight line, but not a completely vertical line, to point B. Point B will place our hands, wrists, radius and ulna, and elbow stacked perpendicular to the bar. When we look at the bench press from the side, I want your elbows to be slightly in front of the plane of the bar so that you can press back in a straight line to point A. I don't want you to touch so low on your body that you place your elbows in front of the plane of the barbell because now you have lost control of the weight. So that's it guys. Hopefully this was easy to understand. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and always remember. Tread on time.